Hi everyone, my name's Tom, this is Quick Watercolour Birds and in this episode we're going to be looking at some really beautiful markings and a few other little tricks, let's go. You have to forgive my setting in my slightly ad hoc intros at the moment, I'm still setting up my studio but hopefully you're here for the painting and not my face and the visuals of my studio. In this one we're going to be looking at a bird called the red-legged partridge, I think they're also called a French partridge. They tend to run around in hilarious little groups but they're beautiful little birds, they've got these amazing shapes and plumpness to them but on top of that they've also got this wonderful form, this kind of um, subtle browns moving into very subtle greys. We're going to be looking at creating a little bit more granulation which is something we'll talk about in that area and then to contrast that subtlety we've got these very very striking barred markings down the side with some heavy blacks and some reds. We've got these beautiful kind of dark markings that dissipate away from the neck around the form of the animal. They're really fun to paint and then just to finish them off we've got these very striking reds on the beak and in the eye. There's loads to talk about here, lots to get stuck into, but as always we're going to make it a very quick, kind of fresh, immediate painting, not too worked, not too heavy. We're not going to do any background on this one. And if you're liking these videos guys, please do feel free to share them with other people you think may too. Please do consider subscribing for all the future videos. And I also have a Patreon teaching channel which is ever growing. There tends to be a lot more longer format videos on there. I have some deeper tutorials and also kind of a greater variety of subjects, although there's still a lot of birds and a lot of wildlife. But that's it guys, we're going to have a look at the drawing, I'm going to talk you through that, a quick look at the materials and then we're going to dive into the painting and I'll see you in the outro. So if you've seen my videos before you know that I quite often start with the big shapes first and getting those the right proportion in relation to each other so I've got a kind of egg shape for the head, very very light egg shape for the body, really focusing on how deep is that egg shape relative to how long it is which gives us the proportion and then how big is the small egg shape relative to the large one. After we've got all of that accurate and in place then we start to add the smaller shapes that represent the details, breaking up the face into increasingly smaller shapes, um, adding more and more detail as we go and then very finely starting to think about the markings one of the big things here, really considering the way that those markings wrap around the form of the body, then it's just a case of kind of cutting and adding little bits to the shape to get it as we want, a quick rub to get rid of the excess lines and we're good to go. So colours, I'm using cobalt blue, lovely clean, vibrant, warmish blue which is beautiful for shadows, it's got a lovely granulation when we add lots of water which you'll see and it also helps to grey down other colours and makes beautiful vibrant purples too. The thalo blue is really only there to help get really really deep rich darks when added to the quinacridone red which is a lovely cool red, you could replace it with alizarin crimson very happily. It's going to be a vital part of this painting because it's going to darken down the Aussie red gold but keep it in the kind of warm orangey sector, you could happily use burnt sienna in this painting as well. So it's a very simple colour palette of only four colours and the thalo blue is only really there to help get us deep darks. I'm going to talk a lot more about the colour mixing and the interaction between these colours as we go, so let's dive into the painting. So we kick off with Aussie red gold, basically uh, pure maybe a tiny tiny touch of the quinacridone red and the tiniest touch of blue helps just grey it down a little bit so the Aussie red gold has got kind of a yellow bias the quinacridone red is going to make it a little bit more orangey and the blue the cobalt blue being opposing to this kind of orangey colour when added in very very tiny amounts just greys it down and gives us this lovely beautiful soft colour I've got a lot of water in the mixture here it's definitely tea consistency. Then you'll notice I add just a little bit more cobalt blue which takes the consistency to being a little bit more pigmented but it also gives us that lovely kind of soft kind of bluey grey colour. So really all we're doing here is balancing the Aussie red gold, the blue and the red and those are the only three colours we use. As I said the thalo blue is going to be there to help get deep darks but try and forget about that 
in the color mixing we're really just balancing three colors which does a really lovely simplicity to that because of the watery consistency um, we're getting some really beautiful granulation like cobalt naturally granulates uh, and when it's kind of in or a high proportion of it is in the mixture we're going to see granulation plenty now we get a beautiful rich color when I use a little bit more pigment we move to maybe a kind of full fat milk consistency of paint there's much more bias towards the Aussie red gold with the quinacridone red to really darken it if I need to push it darker still I add increasingly large amounts of quinacridone red if I need to push it yet darker or I need to neutralize the color a little bit that's when the cobalt blue comes in handy but you can see because there's much less water in this mixture that I've got at the moment it's that kind of full fat milk consistency it's much darker but it's also much stronger in color and I'm working that into the drying mix so we'll get some beautiful wet into wet marks but because the paint consistency uh, has less water in it it's a little bit more controllable um, and it won't completely disappear into the wash already on the page so what I'm doing here is really looking for those beautiful barred markings on the side of the bird looking to link all of the colors together but taking a little bit more of a moment with the smaller um, size zero mop brush that I love to use which is by Jackson's it's called a raven mop it holds a lot of water but it also also comes to a lovely fine point and then I've got that lovely rich color in there and the wash that is on the page now is still very much damp uh, so I can drop more color into it that's why I'm taking this lovely rich mixture that I've got and just kind of thinking about where else can I drop it into the kind of right hand side of the bird so this initial pass on the bird we're really thinking about trying to get lots of lovely colors really flowing together and we want to start thinking about creating the 3D form of the bird so how are we going to create form we're going to have a lighter side and a more shadow side think of it although it is multiple shapes kind of put together if we imagine the ball initially as like a rugby ball type shape or just a ball shape depending on where you're from um, and it's lit from like the top left kind of area we're going to have a much lighter side which I've got it's going to move into being a kind of mid-tone in the middle area as we move round the form and then as we come right round the form and actually back under the ball that's when we're dropping into shadow and if we can give that illusion of form created from lovely kind of soft and lost edges moving from the light area around to the shadow area that's what we're really aiming for in this first pass and then as it dries we can add increasingly stronger amounts of pigment less water ie darker colors smaller shapes little bits of detail and then over the top of that then we can create our markings on the neck so keep it light to start slowly increase the pigmentation and less water to get your darker tones really focusing on bringing those onto the shadow side of the bird to create the form you'll see I'm using a clean brush to pull out little bits of pigment on the light side to further increase the feeling of light but I'm not moving the colors around too much a lot of these areas are beginning to settle down and if I go into them now that's going to really disturb the pigment so at this point we very much just leave that area to do its thing always remember that colors will dry much lighter than we put them on especially the more water we have in the mixture the lighter they will dry the bigger color shift you will see as they dry so a lot of these colors will dry a little bit lighter I do want to work into them a little bit more while they're still wet but I'm just taking this moment to let it all dry off a bit because there's a lot of water there and in that moment I go in and just focus in on some of the smaller more accurate shapes of the head still the same principle I break an area up into a smaller shape and then I think about the tonal gradation within that small shape so for the, the color on the cap of the head it's going to be lit more on the left side it's got a roundness to it so as we drop down and around to the right it gets darker 
The main colour was similar colours again with a bias towards the quinacridone red, a tiny bit of blue and Aussie red gold to neutralise it, mixing uh, the slightly stronger consistency of paint and just dropping that into the right hand side of that little cap on top of the head and then just letting the paint do its thing, not really worrying that that colour kind of drifts and goes wet into wet into the body a little bit, that just allows the colours to flow together a bit more which is a lot of what watercolour is about. These colours might look quite strong at the moment that I'm doing on the beak and the eye but there's quite a lot of water in them and it's pure quinacridone red so it's got that real vibrant pink colour to it. I always tend to err on the side of lighter than we might think because we can always go darker if we need to so I've just blocked in that colour in the eyes and the beak and that represents the lighter red colour. I've left a couple of little lights on the top part of the eye and the top part of the beak as a highlight. Just going to leave those alone to dry. So now we've mixed phthalo blue with quinacridone red giving us a very very deep rich dark purple that is almost looking like black and will represent black for the most part. This area is still wet so I'm taking this stronger consistency of paint, we're now working with maybe a double cream consistency of paint into a moist almost dry wash. So these markings that I'm putting on they will still have a wet into wet feel, we'll get some soft edges but they'll be very very controllable for those two reasons. Number one that the paint on the page is nearly dry so the, the paint that I'm putting down won't shoot into it so much. Number two the paint that I'm putting down onto the page is a very strong consistency. It's almost neat paint but we're kind of in the double cream um, and creeping up towards that kind of marmite consistency. If you don't know what I'm on about with paint consistency definitely recommend you hop back and look at my paint consistency video because that will help make sense of some of this terminology a little bit more but basically as the wash is drying I'm adding increasingly darker pigment and to get that increasingly darker pigment I'm using less water and more paint uh, and that's kind of the basic process that I tend to follow. So in this area it looks quite abstract at the moment, it's very hard to tell whether it's actually going to work or not but I'm just sticking with very interesting shapes using the lovely lively nature of watercolour brushes. So this is a size 8 synthetic brush around, um, it's a proline brush, the, the previous brushes I was using is are uh, made to be like kind of fake squirrel hair, they're also synthetic but they're much softer, they hold much more water. This smaller brush that I was just using um, is proline, it's much more springy, it's mu much more controllable and it can come to a very fine point but that fine point is a little bit stiffer uh, and it's great for doing little details but as long as you work fairly quickly with it it's also great for doing some of those more abstract marks on, on the side of the bird. So it's very easy at this stage to start judging the painting too harshly as being good or bad and we need to stay away from that. We only really need to think about am I getting my colours to flow together and am I getting my tonal values right. We need to stay away from judging the painting as being good or bad because ultimately at this stage it's gonna look unfinished. I know it sounds fairly obvious but people start to panic at this stage that the painting doesn't look finished and they start to worry that it's not very good and it's not going to work and that's an inevitable part of every single painting that I've ever, ever done and it's generally this strange halfway stage where we're over the initial excitement of putting down the washes and letting the colours flow together but we're still some way from actually bringing the painting to a finish so it's a, it's a slightly awkward odds part of the painting and we have to make a few decisions about how we're going to resolve areas and probably my biggest pitfall in these in this time of the painting is in areas away from the focal point like for example the body and the markings here I'm I find myself trying to make them look um, right and make them look more finished than I actually need to because actually I, we always have to remember that if I now go in and finish off the face and bring that to life that's going to be the most refined detailed area generally because it's probably going to be the focal point and actually as soon as we get the head and the eye kind of working 
we realised that some of the other areas that at this point might look very abstract and unfinished, um, even a little bit rough or a little bit crude, actually once we refine other areas like the head or the focal point, we realise actually they look not just perfectly fine, they actually look really great. So always bear that in mind and that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of, I'm not making any big changes to these markings on the side. I'm just trying to bring them to a point that makes sense but I'm not going to overwork them. The paint is nearly dry now so I'd be silly to go in and start pushing it around too much. That's when we disturb the pigment as it's drying and when we disturb the nearly dry pigment that's when we get that kind of overworked muddy look. We don't want to be rubbing the paint around too much, we don't want to be pushing it about too much. So you can see the whole painting is kind of slowed down while I just take my time uh, and it's a great time to take your time at this point in the painting because there's nothing to be done. The The head has already dried off and it just needs a second layer. I know that I just want to leave the light side and the middle tone of the body to dry off so we can just leave that alone. And I've got all the time in the world to do the barred markings because that's as good as dry anyway. So we can, there's kind of that initial burst of activity with the painting. Uh, and now we're at a stage where we can let this dry. So I only really needed five minutes or so uh, to actually dry off. You can see though the, the kind of colour shift, you can see how the colours have kind of settled into each other. Some of the colours have dried a little bit lighter but then the, the more rich intense colours, because there was less water in them initially, there's not been much colour shift there. But what we've got is this lovely smooth transition of tone from the kind of lighter side of the ball that is the body around into the middle region where it starts to get darker. We've got lovely granulation which you might not quite be able to pick up in the video but it is there, lots of lovely granulation. We've got a nice transition of kind of warm colours into the greys. If you'll notice I've, I've got less grey than in the reference photo but always remembering that we don't have to create the painting exactly like the reference photo. That's one of the biggest kind of pitfalls I see with people when I'm teaching is that people try to kind of slavishly represent the photo and they get very downhearted uh, when that when the painting is not matching perfectly the photo and that's not really what we're about here. What we're doing is just trying to find a lovely loose fresh representation of the subject. The photo is simply there um, as a jumping off point, it's there as our inspiration and it's there as our guide if we get a little bit lost to kind of fall back on. So try to think of the photo in those terms rather than something that needs to be absolutely ad adhered to at all costs. So this mix here is thalo blue, quinacridone red. It will have a purple bias but depending on what sort of balance you get, probably about 50-50 you will get a fairly neutral dark. I don't mind it having a little bit of a purpley bias. It's a bit more exciting than just a neutral black. Laying down an initial colour of maybe single cream consistency, which is going to give us a little bit of flow to the paint, but it's very controllable. It's going to give us a reasonably solid dark, but not a complete black. And then now what I'm doing is the, the little drawing of the markings that I did that I very specifically made to go around the form of the body so it will accentuate the form of the body. I'm now just using the small size 8 proline brush which comes to a nice controllable fine point and I'm basically just creating some interesting abstract shapes thinking about the rhythm of those markings and the way that they flow around the body varying the paint consistency a little bit adding a bit more water gives us a slightly uh, lighter, softer tone, using a bit more uh, pigment and less water is obviously going to give us a darker tone and and again don't judge it too harshly, it feels very strange just putting these abstract shapes directly over the top of this lovely smooth wash. You may feel like you need to blend them in a little bit more, like they stick out too much but I promise you if you just kind of trust the process and stick with the process, don't make the shapes too complicated don't do too many of them, 
try and make every single shape look a little bit different use your photo as a guide so pick out some of your favorite abstract shapes of the markings and just try and recreate some of those but don't feel that you have to do them exactly the same as the photo we don't have to do that it's all about the movement i'm now adding more and more in water so and a little bit more quinacridone red and that's giving us a ever so slightly lighter warmer color as we go around the form of the bird it just creates a bit more variation a bit more subtlety what we don't want is a big strong dark black just painted everywhere that's going to kind of uh, flatten things out and kill it a little bit we want that kind of subtle variation and you can see already we're starting to get that that illusion of form and for me this is when watercolor really can start to come to life when we have the the lovely soft gentle gradations of the initial wash mixed with the sharper harder smaller marks now made over the top it's that contrast and that combination of those two different uses of the paint that for me um, i really love about watercolor and that's when we start to see it coming to life with not a huge amount of effort we're only really um, if we cancelled it out the drying time we're only between 15 to 20 minutes into this painting and already we've got something that's beginning to work it's beginning to look like a finished painting you can almost see that the body is as good as done i'm doing a few little dry brush strokes just to increase the level of dark in that area but it really doesn't need a huge amount um, it's really all about bringing the face to life a little bit more that needs obviously uh, some more intense color a little bit more detail and a little bit more light and shadow so really just taking a moment here so that that dark wash that represents the band on the neck is still a little bit wet so i'm going in with a clean brush and i'm pulling out some of the pigment just on the very front part of the chest it's only very subtle but it will just lighten ever so slightly that dark band so that even the dark band that we might initially think is all black still has some tonal variation in it i.e as we move to what is a lighter part of the bird it goes from being a deep rich black with the thalo and the quinacridone to being a slightly lighter kind of ready purple color it's only very subtle but it can make a nice difference we now take this mixture this kind of single cream mixture of the thalo and the quinacridone um, if I, we really really need to push it darker and neutralize it a little bit more i would add the tiniest tiny touch of the aussie red gold uh, and it just kind of cancels out the purple and gives us a slightly more neutral dark it's just something worth bearing in mind uh, I'm just taking my time here to kind of home in on the face so only really making fairly small little changes here I'm rather than just a very straight perfect curve line for the marking the big dark marking I'm just trying to use the the kind of tip of the brush just to make more kind of in and out slightly more jaggedy marks that maybe give the illusion of feathers and a bit more of an interesting look than just a perfectly smooth edge to that dark and now we're coming in with quinacridone red and it's almost pure quinacridone red there's a tiny tiny touch of blue in there to help darken it but what is more importantly darkening the tone of the quinacridone red um, to make it darker than the initial light pink that I put down is simply that I'm using more pigment and less water so again we're kind of to single cream consistency maybe even double cream consistency so it's not really flowing the paint it's not free flowing but it's still got a movable ness to it there's like there's some residual water in the brush there's a little bit of water in the wash on the palette um, and it makes it very very controllable and also makes it darker and I'm trying to make this the the beak very very simple we laid in a light pink color and left a nice little highlight of white on the top we've let that dry off whilst the black band is still dark uh, is still wet sorry near near the beak I go in with this quinacridone red mixture and I just hit the edge of it so that some of that dark seeps in and it gives us the kind of nostril area and then I very simply come into the underside of the beak and just very simply describe the shadow underside of the beak just using one tone and then as that's drying I go in with my slightly more concentrated dark and I just drop a little bit under the beak and if it bleeds into the red of the beak a little bit that's no bad thing 
and I can aid that kind of transition between the two colours by putting a bit more cobalt blue into my quinacridone red mix giving us a slightly darker red which again has not much water in it so this is quite exacting work it's not necessarily complicated it's not it's not necessarily any more difficult than the other parts of the painting but it's just a little bit more exacting it's a little bit more accurate um, and I'm just kind of taking my time with it I felt like the markings were a bit too stark as they were and some of them needed to go into shadow if the rest of the body is falling away into shadow as it comes into the bottom right hand corner it would make sure it would make sense that the the white parts of those barred markings are also doing the same so a very very simple mix of almost entirely cobalt blue with the tiniest bit of conracodone just to give it a little bit more of a purpley vibe and because that area is completely dry as long as I use a, a soft touch I'm basically just glazing over a gentle shadow colour onto some of the whites of those markings um, just thinking about how they would turn into shadow as they go around the form of the bird that's a really beautiful colour for white in shadow so um, I take that cobalt blue with a little bit of quinacridone red and we just look for a very simple shape of shadow. We almost forget that it's a partridge's face and all I'm looking for here is within the existing white shape that happens to represent its face and its neck in the area I'm working in, I just look for a smaller shape that is the white in shadow and we we do that with uh, with the cobalt blue mix if it's a little bit sharp edged in the face that's when I went in with my my damp brush and just hit the edge of it and it just softens that edge down a little bit more it gives us a bit more of a gentle uh, curve and gentle soft transition uh, to give that slightly plump rounded form of the head in that area so you could put the shadow in in a very sharp direct sharp edged way if it looks too sharp to you clean out your brush get rid of the majority of the water but make sure it's a little bit damp and then very simply just hit that sharp edge and it will soften it down I'm now trying to find the transition here between the beak and that shadow area I felt like that dark under the beak was too dark it was too dominant and it was kind of making that whole area feel a bit too heavy so I just went in with my brush and I pulled out some of the dark pigment and it's given it a much softer feel and I've just let the red of the beak and the red under the beak just very slightly drift into that cobalt blue mixture um, uh, on the head the white in shadow and because of the the thicker nature of the paint and the fact there's not so much water in there and the fact both washes are um, kind of moist rather than very wet we do get a soft kind of wet into wet feel between the beak and the face but they're not completely merging together so it's quite a controlled wet into wet and you can see it's really starting to come to life now the more shadow we bring in uh, the more sharp marks we bring in the more definition against the softer more flowy washes this is when we're starting to get that contrast and the painting is beginning to work so it really is now just a case of slowly bringing this eye area to life you can see that I glazed over a slightly more grey colour into the eye um, but leaving a, a white highlight on the top of the ball of the eye so at the moment it looks like a very glassy light eye and it looks a bit odd but we're going to get to that in a minute um, I'm really just trying to bring that beak shape to life I'm just using little sharp marks of a kind of darker red color and just giving it a little bit more definition it's perfectly fine as it is I'm just kind of scratching that itch to get in there and do a little bit more detail and having a bit of a fuss around when I probably shouldn't be so don't, don't be afraid to learn something from that and and just leave things alone when they don't need to be brought to life anymore I'm basically just in my eyes refining the shape just a little bit more it, looking back at it now as I'm kind of narrating this it's not really making a huge amount of difference so I'm learning something as I watch this that actually sometimes I could probably just leave things alone uh, and they look perfectly fine it really is at the moment only the eye to sort out I'm very happy with the painting at this stage uh, on the whole um, I'm still going back in there we go so that 
that's what I've been waiting to show is just pushing that shadow um, just that tiny 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 little bit darker there and it just makes the light hitting the neck pop a little bit more it's kind of a case of how much darker can we make a shadow without making it too heavy and too dark because the darker we push it the more it accentuates the light and the more it accentuates the form but there is a stop point if I was to go any darker than the blue I've just put on the kind of chin and neck area it would be starting to go too dark in value and too heavy and basically and then the white area on the back of the head I also put a very very you might almost missed it if you blink very very quick um, cast of shadow again on that white band above the eye but leaving it white above the eye and then letting it drift into a lovely kind of um, cobalt blue shadow so cobalt blue with a little bit of water in is a perfect tone for kind of white in shadow which is what I've used on the neck the chin the back of the head and also the barred markings a very concentrated mix of Aussie red gold with a little bit of the quinacridone red in gives me that lovely kind of dark red colour for the eye I've painted in the eye leaving a tiny little line of white around it just to help it pop out and then leaving a perfectly white mark uh, for a highlight on the eye itself and that's basically it you can see we're we're as good as there I'm really just taking my time right at the end here and basically having a bit more of a play when I probably shouldn't do um, just refining edges and just sharpening things up a bit it's perfectly fine as it is <laughs> and there we go guys just a little signature to finish it off and just using the nice warm colour that I used for the rest of the bird keep it really simple fun place to do the signature because it sits nicely under the bird and it leaves us kind of loads of negative space over to the left hand side which for me just makes it a nice fun and kind of dramatic composition uh, makes it a bit more interesting there's just kind of sticking it in the middle and also one thing I didn't mention is that kind of that very strong angle that is in the reference photo of the bottom of the bird but I've not let it directly represent anything that it's sitting on it it's just a nice kind of design element is that strong angle of white that kind of chops off the bottom of the bird not everything has to make perfect sense it can just uh, be a fun design element just for the sake of it and that's it guys that was so much fun and also a relatively quick one but a really fun um, end result that I was really happy with I just remember initial wash was very light creating form you can see some of the lovely granulation in the more gray colors coming from the cobalt blue uh, as that wash is drying we start to slowly increase the depth of tone and shadow on the right hand side in particular the bottom area to give us the illusion of form and shape and light moving around the form imagining the body as a like a ball shape and it plunges into shadow as that wash was drying I went in with increasingly darker mixes of quinacridone red and Aussie red gold to push it even darker I added small amounts of cobalt blue and we're using less water and we're dropping that into the drying wash that creates the initial form and also the barred markings while it was still wet I took the phthalo blue added the quinacridone red to make a really deep dark and dropped that into the markings area and let that kind of bleed um, put on a little bit of tone for the cap on the head and let that dry we then let the whole thing dry off go back in with our thalo blue and quinacridone red to bring in the dark markings really thinking about the way that they move around the form of the bird so not too stiff they kind of flow around the roundness of the bird not just solid black but I add increasingly larger amounts of water to the dark to make the, some of the lighter markings you can see more towards the right hand side they also have a bit more quinacridone red in uh, so it's not just a solid black band it's actually got variation to it uh, we knocked in quinacridone red for the beak in the eye second stage we brought in darker quinacridone red slowly added cobalt blue to create the darker sharper marks that again give the form so as soon as we start going from the initial light color and the white of the page around the form of the beak around the form of the eye dropping in darker colors into the shadow side that's when we get the form that's when we get the shape that's when we start to get a sense of the animal coming to life almost just pure cobalt blue to represent the white feathers but in shadow 
stronger under the chin to trap the light on the neck and again give it a bit more form how dark can you get away with making the shadow in order to bring out the light but not making it too heavy and also just glazing that lovely cobalt blue into anywhere that I wanted to represent white feathers but in shadow so on the back part of the white of the head and also on the barred markings it made a huge difference uh, and that's it a nice version of kind of more refinement in the face and a slightly more abstract kind of free-flowing feel to the rest of the body and that's it that was such a fun one i really enjoyed it uh, don't forget you can go and find the reference photo um, over on my the public section of my patreon page and if you're interested in joining me on patreon there's various different tiers and there's all sorts of exclusive content on there um, everything from live stream demos every week to uh, tutorials for you to lower tiers where there's kind of quick tips and all sorts of other stuff and don't forget I also have a podcast that I host where I chat to loads of other wonderful artists and I also talk a little bit more about the business side of art uh, as well for those that are interested that's called creative perspectives all the links to all of this including my social media Instagram at Tom Shepherd artist are all in the descriptions below Thanks for watching guys, I really appreciate it. Don't forget if there's a bird you would like to see me paint, I now have quite a huge list but I'm very happy to add to it and I'm slowly kind of working through it. So um, until the next video, happy living, happy painting and I will catch you soon.